The home of Aisha radiallahu anha, the small hut, it was on the eastern side of the Prophet's mosque. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she could reach from her hut into the mosque, or at least from the courtyard of her hut, right into the uh, masjid. If the Prophet sallallahu needed anything, she would just hand it to him through some kind of opening or curtain. And sometimes he did, he would ask her for, you know, sometimes she would comb his hair. Uh, if he was staying in the masjid, he would just put his head out into the area of Aisha radiallahu house and she would comb his hair. The walls of her room were only six or seven arms lengths long, right? And the ceiling was low enough for a person to touch it if they raised their hands. So if they stood up and raised their hand, they could just touch the ceiling easily. This gives you an idea of the simplicity and the small kind of space that Aisha radiallahu had as her home. Uh, and the space was so modest uh, that Aisha radiallahu describes, she says, if the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was performing salah, if he was praying when I was sleeping, he used to touch my foot uh, when he was about to make sajda and I would pull my legs in and only then uh, could the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam perform his sajda. So she would be lying down typically and uh, when he was praying, she would actually have to move her legs in order for him to be able to have enough space to make sajda. It gives you an idea of the, uh, of the restricted space, but of course the blessed space that her home was. And you know, decades later, when the Khalifa Abdul Malik bin Marwan was planning the extension of the Prophet's mosque, it became necessary to deconstruct the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. Uh, so, you know, obviously now there's the, that huge green dome right above the area where the house of Aisha radiallahu anha was and where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is buried. Uh, but at that time, it was the first time that they were going to deconstruct her house. And the famous Imam, uh, Saeed bin al-Musayyib, he stood up and he said to the Khalifa, I wish you didn't have to destroy this room that, and, and so that people could come and visit uh, and see it. And he said, you know, uh, because if they were to see it, they would be content with what they have. They would feel thankful. He said, thus future generations would understand what kind of life the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pleased with, even though he had in his hands the keys to the world's treasures. Right? SubhanAllah. And really, um, even today, you can actually go, uh, when you go to uh, Medina Tul Munawwara, there's like an exhibition. You can go there and you can actually see models of the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, what it would have looked like, where it was in relation to al-Masjid al-Nabawi. Of course, Masjid al-Nabawi was tiny compared to what it is now, right? Um, and so really by looking at the house of Aisha radiallahu anha and thinking about the space that she had, it, it makes us reflect on the fact that, you know, these were the best of creation. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam could have asked Allah for anything he wanted, but he chose to live a very simple life. So what do you think was in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha? Well, there was a mattress or a mat of some sort, very simple uh, mat, you know, something maybe uh, stuffed with some kind of uh, palm leaves. There was a leather pillow filled with fiber, a piece of leather hung to a hook. Uh, there was a water skin and a bucket for water and a bowl for drinking. Very, very simple items. 